her survivor, he told her across the flame of the lamp. Survivor? She said. Yes. What in God's name are you talking about? We're not survivors. We're the walking dead in a horror film. I'm begging you. I don't care. I don't care if you cry. It doesn't mean anything to me. Please, stop it. I'm begging you. I'll do anything. Such as what? I should have done it a long time ago. When there were three girls to make gun instead of two. I was stupid. We've been over all of this. I didn't bring myself to this. I was bought. And now I'm done. I thought about not even telling you. That would probably have been best. You have two bullets, and then what? You can't protect us. You say you would die for us, but what good is that? I'd take him with me if it weren't for you. You know I would. It's the right thing to do. You're talking crazy. No, I'm speaking the truth. Sooner or later, they will catch us, and they will kill us. They will rape me. They'll rape him. They're going to rape us and kill us and eat us and you won't face it. You'd rather wait for it to happen, but I can't, I can't. She sat there, smoking a slender length of dried grapevine as if it were some rare cheroot, holding it with a certain elegance, her other hand across her knees where she'd draw them up. She watched him across the small flame. We used to talk about death, she said. We don't anymore. Why is that? I don't know. It's because it's here. There's nothing left to talk about. I wouldn't leave you. I don't care. It's meaningless. You can think of me as a faithless slut if you like. I've taken a new lover. You can give me what you cannot. Death is not a lover. Oh, yes, he is. Please don't do this. I'm sorry. I can't do it alone. Then don't. I can't help you. They say that women dream of danger to those in their care and men of danger to themselves. But I don't, I don't dream at all. You say you can't? Then don't do it. That's all. Because I'm done with my own horrid heart. And I have been for a long time. You talk about taking a stand, but there is no stand to take. My heart was ripped out of me the night he was born. So don't ask for sorrow now. There is none. Maybe you'll be good at this. I doubt it, but who knows. The one thing I can tell you is that you won't survive for yourself. I know, because I would never have come this far. A person who had no one would be well advised to call together some passable ghost. Breathe it into being and coax it along with words of love. Offer it each phantom crumb and chill it from harm to your body. As for me, my only hope for eternal nothingness, and I hope it with all my heart. He didn't answer. You have no argument, because there is none. Will you tell him goodbye? No, I will not. Just wait till morning, please. I have to go. She had already stood up. For the love of God, woman. What am I to tell him? I can't help you. Where are you going to go? You can't even see. I don't have to. He stood up. I'm begging you, he said. No, I will not. I cannot. She was gone, and the coolness of it was her final gift. She would do it with a flake of obsidian, he told her himself, sharpened in steel. The edge and atom thick, and she was right. There was no argument. The hundred nights they'd sat up arguing the pros and cons of self-destruction with the earnestness of philosophers chained to a madhouse wall.